I get about three emails per week from companies asking me to review their products on this channel. And for the most part, I turn down almost every single one because they're either not super relevant to camping and four-wheel driving, or they're just not something I think you guys will be interested in, which is always my main priority. But when Bluetti got in touch to see if I'd be interested in checking out their EB70 power station, I decided to make an exception because I think this is a product some of you will find super interesting and it represents a new way of thinking about off-grid power solutions. What's up guys, welcome to a very hot and fly ridden day. Summer has kicked in a couple of days early, but that's all right, because I've come to the right place. As you can see behind me, there's a beautiful beach, which I plan to become acquainted with as soon as I finish this video. Now, before we jump into this little blue box of electricity, I do just want to make it very clear that this is not a sponsored video. Bluetti hasn't paid me any money to say things about the EV70, nor have they had any say in how I put this video together. They did provide this particular unit for the purpose of the review, but everything we cover is my own first thoughts and honest opinions. So, what exactly is this thing? Well, this is a LIFEPO4 lithium battery. Is that how you're supposed to say that, LIFEPO4? Anyway, however it's pronounced, what it means is lithium ion phosphate battery, and that's the preferable type of lithium battery. It's also a battery management system and monitor, a thousand watt inverter with two outlets, a solar regulator, a 12 volt charge station with wireless charging pad, all in a small package that weighs 9.7 kilos. The battery has a capacity of 716 watt hours, but if I'm honest, I didn't really know how much power a watt hour was, so I converted that to amp hours and it works out to around 55 to 60 amp hours. Now that might not sound like much, but keep in mind that with lithium, we can use pretty much all of that charge. Whereas with your standard deep cycle batteries, you can only drain them down about halfway. So with that in mind, this has a similar capacity to a 100 amp hour AGM battery. Exactly the same as what powers my entire canopy setup and runs my fridge, my lights, and charges all my camera gear for one to two nights. Now, I'm sure some of you have been eyeing off these power sockets on the front and thinking, pod coffee machine, perhaps? Well, I've looked into the specs of pretty much every pod machine on the market, and unfortunately, they all use more than a thousand watts. So don't throw away your tin of Blend 43 just yet. So with a coffee machine out of the question, what can you run with a thousand watts of 240 volt power? Well, other than your standard laptop, tablet, and drone chargers, you could also run a rice cooker, a small toaster, an ice maker, pretty much any size TV you want, or my personal favorite, this 750 watt toasted sandwich maker from Kmart. Because who doesn't love a good toasty? So when there's fire restrictions in place and we've lost all hope of a good toasty, the EB70 comes to the rescue. That's living. Anyway, you're probably not going to buy one of these just to make toasted sandwiches. So what other features does it have? Well, it comes with two 100 watt USB-C ports for fast charging things like laptops and tablets, two regular USB ports that put out three amps to charge your smaller devices, two DC power outlets if you happen to be one of the five people on earth who actually uses them, a standard 12 volt cigarette lighter socket that's perfect for running your fridge or for converting to more USB ports. And we also get a 15 watt wireless charging pad built into the top of the unit that's perfect for charging your phone. For monitoring, we have a display on the front that shows us how much charge is going back into the unit when we're charging it, how much power we're drawing when we're using the arrangement of plugs on the front here, and also how much charge is left in the battery. 
That's all well and good for how we use the power, but how do we get the charge back into the system? Well, there's three ways you can do that, and the unit comes with connections for all three. The first and the most effective way to charge the system is using the 240 volt mains power charger, and that will charge the unit from empty to full in about four and a half hours. Secondly, with a built-in MPPT solar regulator, you can connect solar panels up to 200 watts. And in a bright sunny day, that will charge the unit from empty to full in about five and a half hours, if you're giving it the full 200 watts. And lastly, you do have the option of charging using a standard 12 volt cigarette lighter socket when you're on your way to camp perhaps, but it is the slowest method, taking close to eight hours with a strong connection. So who is the EV70 really targeted to? Well, I was thinking about this and I reckon there's three main groups of camper that this is really well suited to. The first is people or families that like to camp away from their vehicle, because you can just bring this down into wherever you're camping, run your fridge, run your lights, charge your accessories, power your 240 volt stuff as well, all without having to run a cable back to your car or bring along a generator. The second is people just getting into camping. Something like this keeps things really, really simple with your battery, battery monitor, 12 volt charge station, inverter, wireless charger, all that good stuff in one convenient package. That's extra useful too if you're planning on changing vehicles because you can literally just pick up your whole power system and take it across to your next car. The third use case is a little bit more unique and that's people like me who do a lot of video work because my God, keeping everything charged is an absolute mission. Until now, I've been getting by using just two USB sockets and one cigarette lighter socket to keep everything charged while I'm away. That's my main camera, my GoPro, my drone, lights, my microphone receiver and two transmitters, my gimbal, my phone, my tablet for editing, and probably more that I'm forgetting. It's a lot of stuff to keep charged, so for me personally, this thing is a game changer. And I reckon I'm gonna be giving it an absolute workout. Well, we've talked a lot about the cool features of the EB70, but what review would be complete without touching on a few downsides? And the main one for me is that due to its portable nature, it does make it a bit harder to install permanent accessories. So things like the roof lights I've got in my canopy and extra charging sockets around your vehicle. It's really designed to be your complete power solution. So if you prefer a more modular or customizable setup, then this might not be the right choice for you. The only other downside I can really think of is that there's no Anderson connections on the front there. I know a lot of people do convert their fridges to Anderson for a more secure connection, because the last thing you want is to rock up at camp after a full day's driving, only to find that your fridge's cigarette lighter plug has wriggled itself loose. That being said, I've always run my fridges through the standard cigarette lighter socket and touch wood, I've never had an issue so far, but I just thought that was worth mentioning. Well, that's my first thoughts on the EV70 from Bluetti. Certainly a very cool product and something I'm really looking forward to getting some more use out of. Apologies if I've been a little bit shiny during this review. It is ridiculously hot and I feel like I'm slowly melting in front of the camera. Five seconds after I finish filming, I'm gonna be jumping straight in that water. Anyway, next time I go away, I'm planning on running the EB70 as my main power solution in my canopy to run literally everything to try and get a comparison between it and my AGM deep cycle battery. I'll pin the results of that test in the comment section down below once I've got a chance to carry out that test. Anyway, I hope you guys found that review interesting and that it answered any questions you guys might have had about the unit. But if not, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna go jump in this water now and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Guys, I think I've just worked out a little bit of a hack. I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier, but what we do is we take the included mains power charger, plug the 240 volt plug into one of the two available outlets on the front of the unit, power up our inverter. Oh yeah, there we go, fires up, green light on the front. Then take the charging end, plug it back into the unit for unlimited power. Genius.